Credit 5, which I had to verify that because I think last semester was extra credit 4. Whatever. It's the next extra credit, which is this week. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, my kid is laughing at something. And you're, you're using the same sample that you used from extra credit 1, that systematic sample, which is why that sampling method is so important that you follow the instructions. Um, and if you got feedback that you have to change that, you have to change that because everything we're doing calculation wise is dependent on that sample. So you have to make sure that sampling method is right. And this week we're just finding a 90% confidence interval for that sample that you guys had um, for the population mean. So what is the average for the population that represents your sample? So whatever the heck sample you chose. Now I told you guys before to put your sample in L5. I don't know why I deleted mine. I was probably using my calculator for something, but I said to leave it there because you're going to use the 35 values for all these different calculations. Why would you want to re re input 35 values? Um, so I had some there, but I don't know. I think I had to refresh this app, so I think my list got turned away. So I'll use L1 and pretend that that's my 35 values. OK. Um, OK, so. This this week you're not so last extra credit you could you you in turn God yo, you turned in I interned you turned in <laughs> you turned in um your you're like your first half of the project the whole thing right from systematic sample frequency distribution your measures of center your five number summary your measures of variation you turned all that in you're gonna have to re input the 35 <laughs> it's like me Oscar. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so you guys did all of that extra, the last extra credit included all of that. This extra credit does not include all of that. It is simply the confidence interval slide. That's all. Okay. So you're only turning in that part and we're getting close to the project. So I, you know, I hope you guys have been doing it because there's only really two more pieces to it, which technically you could probably finish even before it's given. Cause if you look at the slides, you have a confidence interval and then you have a hypothesis test, which you could do both now. But anyway, <laughs> we want a 90%, so that's important. We want a 90% confidence interval for the population mean. And I'm just going to write it here. No. I'll write it down here. And I'll kind of tell you like what I would probably want, you, you know, I would want probably both of these methods or both of these, I'd probably want you to give me the margin of error, even though the instructions don't say that. Why the hell not? Give me the stuff that you know. Um, using the 35 values you created for the extra credit one, you will find a 90% confidence interval. If you did not collect the 35 values yet, you better go back to extra credit one and follow the instructions to get a proper systematic sample. And there's videos for that as well. Um, and share your data, blah. They tell you how to do it. It's like, too easy. <laughs> All right, let's find it. <laughs> and then we'll answer the questions based on it. OK, not a big deal. Because now that we know the stuff that we know this week, we know that we're going to assume that our sample is normally. Actually, we don't need to assume that our sample is normally distributed because our sample size is 35, which is bigger than 30. Remember, we talked about that just now. The population is normally distributed or the sample size is greater than or equal to 30 and ours is 35. So we can use the methods that we're used to. Um, if you realize sigma is unknown, we don't know the population standard deviation for your sample, none of you. So that means based on these two, we use student T distribution. Now, you're not really asked for the critical value or anything like that. You probably should be, but you're not asked for all of that. You really just ask for the confidence interval and then answer some questions. So if I'm doing student T distribution and I'm doing an interval, I'm going to go stat, I'm going to go test, and I'm going to go to T interval. I want an interval and I'm on the student T distribution, T interval. And um, I'm going to go to data. And this is for the for all of you guys for your project because you all should have your data in your list. Right, your data is all in there in your list. And I think it should be L5 if you saved it there. If not, I don't know wherever you put it, know where you put the 35 values. Mine, we're going to pretend is in L1 because I have some values there, just not 35. 
Well, we'll pretend that it's my list of 35 values, L1. My frequency is one, and I want a 90% confidence level, so 0.9. You guys could probably literally do your project with me right now. Your this slide for your extra credit. Calculate. Here we go. I'm probably gonna give everything. So I'm gonna say 20. Oops. Um, does it tell us how to round? Let's just double check because if not, any rounding particulars? I don't see any rounding particulars. I would say go at least two. Okay. Um, in this case, based on how this is, I have to go 20.4 to 26.80. You could go two or three for me. Um, and so 20.4 to 26.80 is my 90% confidence interval for, for the population mean. Um, because I'm so used to this, I'm gonna practice this anyway, I'm gonna find the margin of error by taking the maximum and subtracting the minimum and dividing by two. And by the way, you can also verify that the sample mean and the sample standard deviation match what you found in the last few slides. You know, verify your sample mean matches what you got before. Verify your sample standard deviation matches what you got before, because if they don't, that's off, something happened. Um, let's see, 26.8 minus 20.4 divided by two. And I want, um, I want to actually, some of you write this out like this, and this is one of my, <laughs> I don't know if you guys watch Family Guy, grinds my gears. This is algebraically incorrect because um, PEMDAS, order of operation would say to do division and then subtraction, which is incorrect. I need to do subtraction and then division. So if you're typing it horizontally this way, I need to see parentheses around that because otherwise it's incorrect, okay? And those of you might, have heard that from me in previous um, slides. Like I think I saw it with class with, um, and, I, and I probably bothered every single one of you that did not put parentheses because it really grinds my gears. <laughs> but it's you know <laughs> mathematically incorrect if you don't have the parentheses. So I have my my um, what do you call it? I have my interval. I have it represented in tri inequality form if you want to be fancy because this is a um, project. This is my tri inequality form. This is my interval location, my margin of error. And then I'm going to naturally go here and say we are, just because I'm so used to this, and I guarantee. <laughs> that the one of the questions that it's asking you for is to interpret this. So I'm going to interpret it right away. We are 90% confident that the true value of, of the population mean, and I don't know, you guys all chose different populations, so you write mean mortality rate, mean whatever rate is between, um, in this case, in my example, 20.4 and 26.8. Obviously, your numbers will be different because of the fact that you would have a different sample. But this is like what we've been doing, right? Um, what is your confidence interval? Okay, I gave it to you in two forms. I gave it to you in tri inequality form, and I gave it to you in, in a interval notation. What can you say about the population mean of your chosen data set? I can say that I'm 90% confident <laughs> that the true value of the population mean. Uh, mortality rate or whatever rate you guys did is between blah 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 look at that i already answered the questions that they want why do you have to use the student t distribution i'll just type that the student t distribution is used because why you guys tell me is used because why is it used the population standard deviation is unknown and the sample size is greater than 30. This is stuff that like, I'm done with this extra credit. It should take you all of five minutes because you're so good at your confidence intervals already. So again, um, I mean, it, it tells you like, <laughs> it tells you everything, it gives it away. 
but you're using t interval because you're on a student t distribution because we don't know the population standard deviation we're allowed to use it because the sample size is greater than 30 even though the distribution is not normal or we don't know if it's normal but we have the requirements met so i can find my 90 percent confidence interval which again stat test t interval which is something we're used to i'm going data because i have a list of data values wherever the heck you put it 90 percent interval 90 percent confidence level give it to me and try any quality form interval notation you're used to that why not give me the margin of error and then interpret your interval just like you've been we are this percent confident that the true value of the population mean whatever is between whatever and whatever the student d distribution is used because the population standard deviation is unknown for this population and the sample size is greater than 30 and thus i am allowed to use this distribution done Another thing that <laughs> grinds my gears is based on the fact that the um, instructions are not taken off. OK, if you have the instructions on your um, slide. Interpret the confidence interval and then you inter it's like it's a project. Imagine you're presenting this to somebody. You're not answering questions. You're presenting it. You're, you're kind of like talking about your sample. Imagine you're you're doing that. So you don't want the instructions on there. OK, you are a, statist a statistician and you have this data data that you collected and you're talking about all the different descriptive statistics and inferential. Well, you'll get to inferential statistics. This is part of inferential because you're making inferences about the population. Um, and then you're talking about what your findings are. What does it mean based on the values? So. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Stop recording.